By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached round number four of the Raging Bull series. And in round number four, we are going to look at Jordan playing his mono blue fish deck. And he's taking on Kundert, who is bringing an A uh, Abu archaeologist deck to the table. And this is a very interesting and original built. Now before I go to the decks, I, do, I would just like to mention that you can also go straight to the games and you can do that by checking the description below, clicking on the timestamp and that timestamp will take you straight to game number one. Here we are going to continue with the deck decks and I'm going to start with the deck of uh, Jordan, the mono blue fish deck. And here we see the deck of Jordan, and I, I believe it's safe to say that, that this is his signature deck. He's had some very impressive results with this particular deck, and he's always tweaking and trying to perfect it. Um, if we take a look, what can I really say about this? It, it is mono blue. It is aggressive. It's got the four Lord of Atlantis, so obviously it's got four Miracles of the Pearl Trident. Those two cards go hand in hand really well. It also has the four Flying Man. Interesting thing about Flying Man is when you're playing against it, it, it usually pops up on turn one. And then what I do sometimes is I'm waiting for my opponent to put an unstable mutation on the Flying Man. Now here's the catch with this deck of Jordan, there is no unstable mutation. So you can wait forever until you're dead actually. And then after you've taken like four or five hits by the Flying Man, you start to wonder or doubt yourself and think, do I still wanna use my Lightning Bolt? I've already taken four or five damage. Maybe I wanna wait. I mean, another interesting thing about this deck is that there are no Surrender Befreeds. So that's another, usually an auto include when you're playing with blue and they are not here. So it's quite interesting when you're playing against this deck that maybe you're waiting for cards that are simply not coming. So that's always kind of a thing that I like when, when, when players make out of the box uh, choices. Talking about out of the box choices, look at those two dundons. And uh, I mean, that's pretty cool. And I think when I asked Jordan about this, or maybe I read it somewhere, is as he said, you know, a lot of people are playing blue power, they're splashing blue. So usually the Dun Dun can attack. And then you've got four power for two blue. I mean, that's amazing. If you can actually hit with a Dun Dun, um, it's, it's pretty good. Obviously, it only has one toughness. So as soon as your opponent has some form of defense, it's not as strong anymore. On the other hand, you can also look at it from the other way and say, okay, listen up. I'm using my Dundun as a four power blocker to kind of kill four power creatures like a Suchi, for example. And then all of a sudden Dundun becomes better again. The same thing can be said for offense. You're going to attack. Okay, are you actually going to block it on your Mistress Factory? Or are you going to um, put a Mistress Factory in the way of the Dundun? I, I don't think a lot of players would. So so, so Dundun is, is, is a good card from multiple perspectives. Obviously, it is really, really bad against any first strikers. I mean, that's a fact, but it's an interesting include and looking at the results that Jordan has had with this deck, always playing with Dundun, I, I really believe it earned uh, his spot in an, in an aggro uh, blue build. Also interesting here and, and a personal favorite card of mine, the Mahamoti Jin. Um, it's, it's a really nice finisher if the game uh, goes long. Again, interesting here that he hasn't chosen for the Surrender um, Jin. You see a lot of people playing with the Surrender Jin. It's two blue and two, also for a five six. But you have to sack a land during your upkeep, and if it's an island, it deals three damage to you. But as you can see, Jordan has decided not to go for that. Instead, he says, "You know what? If the game is going long, I'm playing a Mahamoti Jin." Also interesting here. See uh, the one off of the Unsummon. I think Unsummon is quite interesting. Uh, also playing with two control magics and two clones. And I think that's maybe the reason that he hasn't included Surrender Jin as a finisher, thinking, okay, it is a four drop. I already have four, four drops in that, you know, I already have that department covered. So why not just go with a big fatty late game in the form of Mahamoti Jin, possibly even being able to clone it uh, late game as well. And of course we see uh, the blue power pieces. Um, interesting again is that he's not playing uh, the time twister main so he's playing it actually in a sideboard and the reason why i think that's interesting is that you would think when you're playing aggro blue that you would maybe play it in your main uh 60 cards because usually you burn through your cards quite quickly like a murphic of the pearl trident flying man lord of atlantis uh dun dun all those cards or one or two drops so you're probably going to play out a lot of cards at the start of the game on the other hand um you can also see a very strong control 
package in this deck. I mean, look at the four counter spells, look at the two spell blasts, um, look at the Psy blasts, you know, um, Psyonic blasts. You can use those aggressively, but also controlling. Uh, Energy Flux is more of a control card. So there are definitely some control elements in this brew as well. It's more than just, you know, splashing, splashing, splashing. It's also, and I'm not saying smashing, but splashing, if, if you get it. <laughs> okay, 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 bad joke, but anyway. Um, so it's not just, you know, aggro style. There's also a, a rich control element. And, and per that's something I personally like when you're playing a blue aggro deck is that because of the counter spells and because of cards like Unsummon, uh, Energy Flux, uh, a Control Magic, you can, you can play a more slow paced game as well. You can go more controlling as well, you know, where you kind of protect your creature and you just try to, to keep bashing on. So that's, um, that's quite an interesting take. Curious to see uh, how it's going to do against um, the AB, or I keep saying ABU, but I need to say ABU, against the ABU Archaeologist deck of Kundert. Uh, let's take a look at that brew. And here we see the deck of Kundert, Abu Archaeologist. And obviously it's named after two cards, Abu of Jafar and Argivian Archaeologist. And maybe it's nice to kind of zoom into that first card, Abu of Jafar. So Abu of Jafar, very interesting card. You don't see it often, but it's actually, it's quite good. It's quite an interesting little card. It's one white to cast. It's Arabian Nights, 0-1 creature. And what it does when it dies, that's when the magic happens. When it dies, every creature blocked or uh, blocked by or that uh, blocks Abu Jafar is also destroyed, right? So it's also also dies. So in, in, in other words, Abu Jafar is a really good wall. You put it on the battlefield, you have this creature there, and as an opponent, you just don't want to attack. You don't want to attack with an Urn of Jinn when your opponent has an Abu Jafar. You don't want to make that trade. So what happens is probably there's some kind of a standstill. And I guess in case with Jordan, it could be, I don't know, a Lord of Atlantis, for example. You don't want to attack with your Lord of Atlantis into the Abu Jafar. So there's a standstill, nothing is happening. And this is where some another card in Kundert's deck is getting really interesting because he's also playing with three Preachers. So he can then cast Preacher, he can tap Preacher, and then, um, you know, he can take over one of the creatures and perhaps he can just take over the single creature that is still there because it doesn't want to attack, because it doesn't want to die to Abu Jafar. So Abu Jafar is basically functioning, I believe, in this deck as a wall, a really good wall. Unfortunately, it doesn't have flying, then it would be even better. Um, if we look at the rest of the deck, we see three Argivian archaeologists. Um, of course, they work together very well with, with the Jalen Tome, the little book. Uh, Jalen Tome, three to cast from the Antiquities, uh, two to tap, draw a card, and then discard a card. So what you can do is, because you know there are three archaeologists in your deck, you can start filling your bin with artifacts. So you can just, for example, you can put a Triskelion in there. He's playing with a full playset. Triskelion are very expensive to cast. So you can say, you know what? I'm putting a Triskelion in there. I'm going to get it back later anyway uh, with my archaeologist. Now, uh, he also has some some beef. We, I already mentioned the four Triskelion, but he's also playing with three Sarah Angels and two Suchi. So there's quite a lot of power in this deck as well. He's also playing with a full playset of Mithras Factories. And look at that. I, I didn't even notice that until now. He's playing with a full playset of Maze of Ifs. So I actually think that this could be difficult for, for Jordan to face. I mean, Jordan wants to play very aggressively um, and, and usually that's a problem for for these kind of more creative decks that want to do all these weird things like you know, having the Abu Jafar on, uh, preacher and creatures away, uh, using the archaeologist to get artifacts out of the bin. So usually these strategies are too slow when you're playing against an aggro deck like the Blue Fish deck. But in this case, because he's also packing it with, of course, the four uh, Swords of Plowsiers and, and, and the four Maze of Ifs, I mean, he's got a lot of defense going. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how this is going to pan out. Let's let's go to the games and, uh, and let's see how this will unfold. Let's go to game number one. Game number one. And we've got Kunder sitting on the left and Jordan sitting on the right. So there's a Starbuck Kunder basic planes. And there's a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident by Jordan here. And there's an Abu Jafar by Kunder. Right, starting off with a beautiful card here, and of course also a Mishra's uh, factory. And you see Jordan, he's willing to make the trade because he's just a 1-1. One, one. So this is where it gets interesting. And he's actually making the trade with the Abu Jafar. And there's no um, Lord of Atlantis here from Jordan, so that's already interesting. And no land drop here from Kundert. Aye, that is too bad. 
There's a Swords to Plows here it's on the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And there is a Maze of If attacking here for two onto Jordan. And Kundert really needs some lands here. And look at that, Jordan also missing a land drop. So this is a very interesting game here so far. And there is a Jaloon Tome. And you can see Jordan wanting to counter probably, but he's thinking, okay, do I really want to counter this card? And he's deciding not to. Look at that playing an Energy Flux. Ay, 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 ay. And Kunert's already low on land. Remember, Energy Flux is forcing Kunert to pay two during the upkeep for each artifact or it is destroyed. And you can see the um, um, the uh, Jalem Tome going to the bin there, but a disenchant on the Energy Flux. And I think the land text here is very interesting. Although he's not able to activate it yet because Kundert's got four lands and Jordan's got four lands. And I think the problem here for, ooh, counterspell on that Argivian Archaeologist. I want to say the problem here maybe for Kundert, okay, I guess Jordan doesn't really care. He's playing out another island. Because I wanted to say the problem is, um, hitting him here for two, by the way, after that time walk, is that Jordan has a deck where he doesn't need a lot of land. So I thought maybe he's just going to keep his land count on four and not really decided, not really playing out any more land, canceling out that land tax. But he's deciding not to. Perhaps he has a Mahamoti in hand. And um, let's take a look here. So Kunert is looking up his lands. That must be a relief for him because he was pretty low on lands this whole game. And remember, he's playing with uh, three Sarah Angels main, so he probably wants to play them out. And I believe with four um, Triskelions, there we see a Felwer Stone, so that means at least he can make some more lands. Got now six lands all of a sudden. Will we see? No, there's a Chaos Orb. I was actually expecting a Triskelion here, but a Chaos Orb instead, but a Counterspell from Jordan here, who's been countering away quite a lot of cards. And if Kundert can find another Archaeologist and get it on the board, perhaps he can get that Chaos Orb back. Not casting anything here for Kundert. Six mana now for Jordan. Will we see the Mahamoti Jin? No, there's another Lord of Atlantis. Remember, they pump each other. Another Maze of If here by Kundert. So not really great news here for Jordan. It's going to be difficult for him really to, to get by all these Maze of Ifs. And look at that. There is a Preacher. So next turn, Kundert can take over um and there's a control magic on the preacher probably i wanted to say kundert can take over one of the lord of atlantis's but we see a control magic now by jordan and will we see a disenchant there's a disenchant will we see a counter spell on the disenchant Ooh, this game is going everywhere and there we see a counter spell by jordan on that disenchant and that means that kundert will I have to accept that there's a balance. Wow, this is a great card and no more counter magic from Jordan. Fantastic magic here by Kundert. And he's losing one planes it seems and after that he's playing out his uh, Preacher. So Preacher on the board, this is very interesting. And there is a control magic on the Preacher. But there is a Swords to Plows here on Kundert's own Preacher here. Wow, what a swingy match. And I have no idea how this will end up. I mean, there's just so much happening. So Kundert taking turn here, another land tax. And Jordan playing another Lord of Atlantis. But remember, uh, Kundert has two Maze of Ifs. So it's really difficult for Jordan to break through this. Attacking here. Is he attacking here with the 2-2? That's quite interesting. And Jordan animating his factory. So will we see a disenchant here on the factory? I guess. Or will we see some other trick? Very interesting. Maybe this was just a good old fashioned uh, playing error by Kunert not seeing that uh, Mishra's factory on the board. So that was kind of a, uh, a freebie. Although, oh, look at this. This was the idea of Kunert. He wants to activate his land tax. Ah. I'm liking this. I'm liking this way of playing. Uh, he's got two land taxes, so he can just take out tons and tons of land. And uh, quite a nice play here from Kundert. And let's see what else he can do. Playing an Abu Jafar here. And uh, I must say, I mean, the longer the game takes, I think the better it is for Kundert. Uh, although uh, although I, I, I have to say Jordan also has some... Um, control elements, but I mean, those maids of the Ips are just really difficult for him to, to deal with. Attacking again with the 
uh, Mishra's Factory kind of doing the same trick again. This time Jordan is designed to block with the Dundon. And there we see a Flying Man. And of course Dundon is not very good in this particular matchup because Kunert is not playing with any uh, with any blue. So he's not playing with any blue lands. And there we see a Counterspell. No, actually a Psy a Psy Blast, Psionic Blast here on the Sarah Angel. I want to say there we see a Sarah Angel from Kundert, but a Psionic Blast here by uh, Jordan. It's kind of hard to see the life totals, by the way. But I believe Jordan is still on 18. This was the first damage from his own Psy Blast. And there we see another Dundon here by Jordan. I don't think those Dundons are going to play a very big role. You can use them a little bit as a blocker, I guess. There we see an Archaeologist. This could be the decider here. Jordan playing a Counterspell. Well done. Playing a Counterspell on the Archaeologist. And it must be difficult. Jordan must be wondering now, how many Archaeologists is he playing? I mean, you really don't want to see an Archaeologist hitting the board because there's so much value in uh, Kundert's graveyard right now. So many valuable artifacts, including a Chaos Orb. So you really don't want to see a resolved um, archaeologist. And you can see Jordan is looking and thinking, okay, how many creatures do I need to kind of be able to deal some damage here to Kundert with those three Maze of Ifs and that single Abu Jafar. And of course, Kundert has to pay for his artifacts because of that energy flux. And he's playing another Mishra's Factory passing turn here. And Jordan passing as well. It's kind of a standstill situation here. This is something that you can expect with the Maze of Ifs. And there's another card there in the corner. It's hard for me to see though. There is an Ancestral Recall by Jordan. Refilling his hand. And there seems to be a glitch here. So... There we see the card. It's a clay statue. And there is a disenchant on the energy flux. Well, the, <laughs> this is just ignore. I know the uh, the image that you're seeing is rocking. It's moving a little bit. These are actually live recordings from the Raging Bull series. Uh, in the meanwhile, the game is continuing. We see a Sarah Angel on the side of Kundert. And it's hard to see that one card from Jordan there. I think it's a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And he's playing another Flying Man. And let's see what's happening here. Playing a Soul Ring. I mean, look at those two battlefields. They're just swamped with creatures. There is a Mahamoti Jin. That is a great blocker for the Sarah Angel. But it's, I'm sure at some point, um, Jordan will want to deal some damage here to Kundert. But I just, I don't really see a way how. I mean, he's got Lord of Atlantis. He's got three Flying Man. He's got Murphic of the Pearl Trident. He's got Mahamoti Jin. I'm not including the Dundun because he cannot attack with the Dundun. He's got two uh, factories. He also has an active Library of Alexandria there, by the way. So he played that in between while the whole image was, wasn't very clear. So... Activating it now again, going to eight in his hand. I do think that now Jordan is a slight favorite just because of that active library of Alexandria and he can start pumping out so many creatures here, cloning the Mahamoto Jin. So this is one of those late game tactics that we talked about. And there's another clay statue. I mean, if we look on the side of Kundur, he's got a lot of blockers as well. He's got two clay statues, um, you know, two Suchis. He's got a Sarah Angel, he's got a Abu Jafar. I mean, there's so much happening there. Cyblast on the Sarah Angel. So does that mean that he can now finally attack? Attacking with three Flying Men and uh, two Mahamoto Jin. So he's able to deal two damage. At least it's something. So that means Kundrid is dropping at least a little bit. And there is an Argivian Archaeologist. And this is bad news here for Jordan. He needs to counter this or get rid of it somehow because now, uh, remember, uh, Kundrid has a Chaos Orb. Ooh, spell blast on the Argivian archaeologist. Ay, 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 bad news for Kundert because Kundert has that Chaos Orb in the bin. So if you can start getting that, that combo going of Chaos Orb, Argivian archaeologist. And there is, oh, this is an important card as well. A strip mine on one of the Maze of Ifs attacking again. That means he's taking three damage from the Flying Man. And I believe, I believe it's, it's going to get really tough now for Kundert. And 
I think that that Loa is really helping Jordan here because he just keeps drawing into creatures and he keeps dumping them on a battlefield. There's a Chaos Orb, probably going to flip on one of the mazes of If. And he's actually missing the flip. Ay, 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 he's missing the flip. And there's a, oh, there's a sword. So we see a counterspell here from Jordan. If this sword resolves, actually, you know, Kunur is buying himself a lot of time here. But there is a spell blast on the swords. And that means an attack, another three damage in here for Kundert. And I mean, he's slowly dropping. He's losing this battle. He needs to find a Sarah Angel. But remember, remember, I believe Kundert already lost two Sarah Angels. There is another swords. And no counterspell this time from Jordan. So that means only two damage here for Kundert. Another flying man, a full play set of flying mans on the side of Jordan. And that means that, that um, Jordan can, can swing in next turn for two damage again. Because he's got, oh, actually for three damage. A clone over the Mahamoti. Attacking with all his flyers. Sending back a flying man and a Mahamoti. Three more damage here for Kundert. I believe he's on, what, two or three life? Oh, look at this Triskelion. He can start shooting. He can start shooting at the Flying Man next turn. Actually, right now. He doesn't have to wait, but he's probably going to wait till Jordan attacks. He's first going to draw another card, and now he's going to attack with everything he has. And look at that. He's shooting down three Flying Men, taking one damage. He's still on one life. And is that a side blast? I believe it is. And okay, I guess he, he was on five still. Another side blast, and that's it. That's game. Oh, and he's showing his library. His library was almost empty. And I think that you know Jordan is really really happy that he's playing with um, with four uh, psionic blasts main. You know, um, I think that's a very good choice, Jordan. And especially when you're playing against a player who's playing with uh, white, because you know you're going to get a lot of life from the uh, swords to plows here. Man, this was, there was so much happening in this match. Uh, I should say the first game, because we still have a second game, possibly a third game to go. Um, for a moment there, I thought Kundert was going to take it, because, I mean, usually when you're playing against aggro and you manage to take the game into mid-game, late-game, you've got it. But like I said in the deck deck, Jordan's deck is not just aggro. It also has a control component, and we could see that here also with those uh, clones over the Mahamotis. There was definitely a late game, and he was able to kind of play through um, play through those um, mazes of if of Kundert and I'm curious to see how Jordan is going to sideboard against this deck now that he's seen it and I guess the same thing counts uh, for Kundert here so let's let these players sideboard for a while for a while and we'll catch up with them in game number two game number two and uh, wow I mean <laughs> game one crazy crazy game Curious to see how it's going to end up here for the second one. There we see a Abu Jafar here by Kunder turn one. And look at that, pretty good opening here for Jordan. Ancestral Recall as well, really nice. So there, uh, that blue mox and also a Soul Ring. Interesting enough, no creature or anything on the board. And there is a Chaos Orb here by Kundert. Passing turn here. Let's see, four, five mana for Jordan. Playing a Lord of Atlantis and passing turn. Another basic planes. And Jordan's up again. I mean, he's got so much land. I mean, if he if he has, I mean, he only plays with a Mamo Dijin, a one-off. But if he would have it right now, it would be killer. And there's a Jalum Tome from Kundert. And will we see... Yes, there is. Oh, no, I want to say a Spell Blast, but we see a Psionic Blast on the Abu Jafar. Look at how powerful the Abu Jafar is. And now probably Jordan's going to swing in for two with the Lord of Atlantis. Kunert's dropping to 18, and he's playing a Time Walk, so another piece of blue power here. And Kunert's dropping to 16. And there we see an Energy Flux. Oh, this is quite good. Because now Kunert has to choose. Does he want to keep his Chaos Orb alive? Or, or is he? Okay, so he's going to flip first so that he doesn't have to pay the cost for the energy flux. And he actually misses as well. So we saw Kundert miss. And uh, the thumbs down here from Jordan. We saw Kundert miss. 
and we saw um, a miss by Jordan in game one. So both of these players are missing their orb flips. And that's what I like about Chaos Orb, you know, it's 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 not set in stone. And there we see uh, Jordan using his Soul Ring to pay for his Mox Sapphire. Attacking here for two. And that means Kundra's going to drop to, I believe, 14 here. It's hard to see the, the life totals. And there is a clay statue. Quite interesting, the 3-1 creature from Antiquities. It doesn't see a lot of play. There is a Spell Blast, but it is actually quite a good creature. For two, you can regenerate it. And we see that Jordan is giving up his Mox. He is attacking again. That means that Kundert is dropping to 12. And there we see a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. And I think what Kundert needs exactly is a creature. And he's bringing a creature to the table. The question is, can Jordan counter this one? No, he cannot. Of course, it is an artifact creature. So that doesn't mean that Kundert will have to pay the tax for it. And there we see a Chaos Orb. Are we going to see another Orb Flip? Will... Ooh, and he's hitting it this time. So that means that the uh, the Suchi's gone. Swinging in for four here. So Kunda dropping to eight. And there is another creature. The downside, of course, of that clay statue is that Kunda doesn't have the mana to regenerate it straight away. So next turn, if it sticks, he'll have to decide, am I going to block and trade it for, for example, the Lord of Atlantis, or am, am I going to keep it? There is a clone over the Lord of Atlantis attacking now, and he's decided to make the trade. I think that's a good decision, but he is dropping to three life, though. And what can Kunder do? There's his Abu Jafar, at least. So that will probably eat up or the Lord of Atlantis if Jordan decides to attack with it. Let's first see if Jordan uh, isn't going to counter it. And no, he's not. So he's taking on his turn. And there's another Lord of Atlantis swinging in. Of course, blocking the Lord. And that means one more damage. He's dropping to two measly life. There is a disenchant on the energy flux. Kundert needs something powerful here. Perhaps a balance. There is a balance. Counterspell on the balance. Ay, 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 ay. And that means that Jordan has got this one. <laughs> here we see both of the players celebrating this moment um wow 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 so really nice to see this kind of magic here and how quickly that game number two went and how slow that game um number one went it's such a big difference and i think the biggest difference here was in game number one we could see uh we could see kundert finding his mazes of if and that really extended the game into mid game late game in game number two we just saw jordan uh, with his blue power, drawing a lot of cards, finding a lot of Lord of Atlantis, being able to put pressure on straight away, countering the right creatures. Um, so a completely different game and both both had their charm for completely different reasons. But thank you, Jordan and Kundert for sharing this great old school magic uh, with us. And I just want to say uh, to you, the viewers, sorry that the image quality is not top and it's, it's hard to follow the life totals. But I, I still wanted to share these games with you because I just think the decks are interesting and the synergy is interesting and just everything, the swinginess of these games is just, just really fantastic at this Raging Bull Series tournament. Uh, if you like this, next week, Friday, I'll have round number five coming up. So that's another really nice match to look forward to. So um, I, I, I would suggest just to keep an eye on the channel. Remember, we have updates on Tuesday and Friday and usually on Sunday as well. So if you like old school magic, make sure to subscribe right here on Timmy Talks. And if you want to support the channel and you're already a sub, thank you for that. You can also leave a like, leave a comment, helps out a lot. And you can also join Timmy Talks on Patreon where you can become a sponsor of the show. There's probably a card popping up right now. Click on that card. That'll take you to Timmy's Patreon page. Talking about the patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at all the magnificent, fantastic, wonderful, wunderbar patrons of Timmy Talks.
Ik heb het gezien.